Hey everybody, what up? Um, so in this video, I'm talking about coding's not dead, man. Um, I'm looking at, uh, I watched this video from T uh, Tech Lead. He's, he's always been, um, he's a really smart dude. Um, I was watching this video though, is like, is coding still worth it in 2024? And he makes a lot of really good points about like the fact that, you know, being a modern day programmer is sort of equivalent to like what it was when it first got started. So he's basically saying like back in the sixties, when programmers, you know, first became a career opportunity, it was about $60,000 a year. And that was inflation adjusted. I would say probably that's a little bit off. I mean, I would think that, um, you know, my guess would be probably more like 70, 75, you know, and, uh, and that's inflation adjusted, meaning 75,000 now is about what you would make back then. Um, so it wasn't like this, um, you know, high demand uh, or really, uh, I would say, a prestigious job opportunity back in the day. But honestly, I wasn't around back then, so I don't know what the hell it was like, to be honest. So um, I can tell you what I've seen. So I've seen family members because my grandfather and my father were both programmers. My dad was more of an entrepreneurial programmer. He was involved in a lot of different things, but my grandfather was in the military and then like he was working i mean back when computers were the size of rooms and things so he goes way back with that uh he ended up retiring um in the early 2000s with dot net so dot net was just you know coming out and becoming a thing at the time and that's sort of how he ended his career i've seen computers from the advent of uh not long after really the personal computer explosion revolution which would be like the early 80s and that's where microsoft took hold with ms dos which ms dos for anybody that doesn't know was basically bill gates doing a deal with ibm to provide an operating system for a personal computer because ibm was getting into the market to compete with apple and they needed an operating system so the operating system that all the businesses used was something called cpm and it was created by a guy named gary kildall but he was charging a lot of money so this guy was already worth hundreds of millions even back in the early 80s and, you know, Bill Gates was trying to get him to basically license his software to this IBM stuff. So he tried to facilitate the deal. He was able to do that through his mother, who had connections to IBM. Long story short, you know, Bill Gates is a, um, you know, he's, he's, he's his own level of genius, but he's definitely, you know, cutthroat, typical business guy. He was able to um, facilitate the deal with IBM for the personal computer. So basically, that's how um, he created Microsoft. So he bought MS DOS for like fifty thousand dollars, which was a ripoff product from CPM, and then that's where I sort of entered the computer market when MS DOS was still the primary way of doing things. Windows was around to compete with Macintosh's uh, graphical user interface. Um, where I personally started dealing with computers, I did everything on DOS, and then I remember Windows three point one coming around, and I'm like, man, I don't want to deal with this. You know, when it came to installing games or whatever, I thought it was slow. It restricted me. Like, I didn't know what the hell I was supposed to do inside the GUI, but I knew how to do it in the command line. So all that said, yeah, I've seen computers from my first computer and my actual computer that I owned was a laptop and it was black and white. So I'm assuming this was around 1989, 1990, something like that. And I just used it to play video games. And a lot of my friends had Super Nintendo. So like, I remember like I'd, I'd had it for a while, but Super Mario 3 was a pretty popular game that came out. I think it was 3, and it was for the original Nintendo. But I, I remember it because I had a Nintendo, and I would play that stuff, but I would also be playing these like computer games, and none of my friends or anybody had a personal computer at the time. So I definitely got experience in the computer markets pretty early, but then there was this big gap from me graduating high school to almost the age of 30 before I went back to computer programming and just getting involved in not not just even programming but just you know generally how to operate and use a computer whether it's like microsoft outlook or excel files or windows explorer or how you install things you know through windows or you know just basically becoming accustomed to using a computer every day so all that said man i, I go back with uh programming I, you know all that time i was um you know, surrounded by it. Basically, my grandfather always had multiple computers. I, I would go and visit my grandparents. Like as a young child, I remember one time I was trying to do like a hard reset and I unplugged my computer, or at least I thought it was mine. And I ended up unplugging his and like it, it ended up blowing away a lot of his work and stuff like that. So he wasn't too happy about it. But 
he probably should have saved it. I don't know if he did or not, but he seemed mad at first and he was just like, no, I'm just a kid. So anyway, I love my grandfather. But, you know, I, like I said, I was sort of surrounded by this. So I saw, um, you know, the advent of the Internet. I remember a world where, with, where we didn't have the Internet. I remember a world where we didn't have a cell phone and I'm only 42. So um, all this said, man, I've seen a lot. And now when I enter this market, like, so I saw the dot com crash. I wasn't in the industry as a programmer, but I saw what it did to the economy. Um, I was around during the Great Recession of 2008. Uh, I was definitely around during the Great Resignation of 2020. And then now I'm around for this new revolution, which is a new revolution, and that is artificial intelligence. And yes, going back to like 2012, I mean, when my channel was first around, I remember busting on IBM Watson, like saying like, oh, this Watson thing. I am a technological breakthrough. This morning, I read over 4,000 articles on leukemia in less than a second. I can understand euphemisms, idiosyncrasies, and complex metaphors. I know every detail of every public quarterly report in the last 20 years. And I'm just getting warmed up. Hello, my name is Watson. Together, we can now think the limits of what's possible. Welcome to the cognitive era. You know, we've been promising AI since I literally started this channel over 10 years ago. Not hype. I mean, it's not hype, but what we have now is we have companies that are, that essentially like, you know, they've scraped all the data in, in, in the world, like human data, whether it's on websites and it's in books, you know, if it's behind paywalls. We don't really know exactly how much data I don't think has been scraped by these companies, but like it's sort of hip hypocrisy because um, when Google was first coming around, they had a search bot and they literally changed the way the rules of the Internet worked. And this was in the mid 1990s. They're building a search engine. It's out of Stanford and they're just crushing websites like requesting data all the time because they had a good algorithm and they had a good product and they just needed to capture the world's information that was on the internet but companies didn't like them doing that so in the mid 90s we had something called robots txt right so every website now if you're a webmaster you know about robots txt but it's a file that says whether or not it's a basic text file and it just tells bots whether or not you allow your website to be searched um, by search indexes or um, you can you can restrict like all of it or you can just allow some of it but, um, you know, that that rule was created because of Google's bot that was going around and scraping people's websites. So companies would get mad like, hey, I don't want you like costing me money and resources when your bots just like requesting all the pages on my website, like every two hours to see what changed. Other people just didn't want Google to have it because it took a lot of time and effort for them to, you know, to gather that data, whether it was user contributed or. Uh, just some subject matter expert that was writing data, uh, you know, just giving their information, their thoughts and everything. Bottom line is that we've all done this now since the mid 90s where the Internet really started taking off. And now just a handful of companies have all the power to harvest that data. They've already harvested it. And now they're just reaping the benefits of. Uh, of just iterating over that data, that massive data with massive data centers and deep learning, um, you know, neural networks. And really the breakthrough it seems to be is this natural language processing that we can almost mimic human like thoughts and behavior and certainly reasoning and understanding by guessing the next word. So we've sort of switched the goalposts from, um, you know, artificial intelligence used to mean artificial general intelligence, talking about maybe the possibility of the singularity or something along those lines. But now artificial intelligence just means uh, natural language processing, machine learning, deep learning, language models, true artificial intelligence that we used to refer to 10 years ago is now known as artificial general intelligence. So whether or not we have that or not, that's up for debate because, um, you know, I was always uh, sort of a naysayer on that. I'm like, yeah, you know, th this obviously works like you could even do coding or, you know, there's tons of jobs that are at risk and maybe not of uh, being eliminated entirely. But I do think that, you know, there's a lot of jobs that are going to be 
changed dramatically, and that includes coding, and it's already happening, where we're going to be using these tools to just be better and more efficient at what, what it is that we do. So to summarize all this, I mean, th there's a, a lot that I could actually, I feel like I could talk probably for hours on just, uh, you know, just a few of these subjects, really. But we're not losing our jobs anytime soon. And I've, I've been on the record saying that now I could lose my job tomorrow or, or you might lose your job. And that doesn't mean like some of us might not lose our jobs. Some people are already losing their jobs. All that's really happening is that we're getting a revolutionary new way of having essentially a pair programmer at our disposal to help us get things done. Now, the concern that I have is that the companies that control this data, like a recent release, like a, a, an email, OpenAI now has plans to try to like basically sell ads and implement that into their, um, the, you know, their chat bot. So similar to the way Google first got started and you're searching for something, but then companies can pay to have their ads listed above other people. I mean, there were Supreme Court lawsuits in regards to this type of thing. And that's what is on the horizon here with these chatbots is like, they're going to be much more discreet, but you're going to get recommendations of certain products and maybe it's going to be very subtle and all this, but that that's where we're going to be headed. And we're obviously headed into a world where we're not going to know what's real and what's, what's fake. Uh, there's been people getting framed for saying things that they never said. Uh, it, it's being done in audio and video. And you now have texts or scammers that are calling your phones to, to get your, your, your voice recording so that they can make, you know, scam calls against your relatives and things. Um, so this is going to be definitely this AI revolution is it's a spammer's dream come true. It's uh, definitely a criminal hacker, uh, cheapskate, you know, lion, whatever. Like th they, they love all this technology. And we're obviously going to have an explosion of new products that are going to be needed that are going to be able to filter out scam callers, scam people that could be talking to you, scam videos, content, things that could be written uh, by bots and all this. And, and, you know, we're definitely headed into a completely new world where things are just simply going to change. And there's always going to be this adapting new thing that is going to come along to create more opportunity. So like when the horse and carriage went away, it didn't mean that like there wasn't a humongous explosion of, of growth in the automobile industry, right? Auto insurance, the assembly line, Ford, all the, you know, there was an explosion there, like even something like the printing press, you know, libraries are still around. Their roles have changed and adapt to, adapted to be more uh, digital. And that's going to happen most likely in the extreme. It's certainly going to happen in programming, in my opinion. Your juniors and mid-level programmers are probably not going to necessarily lose their job, but you're still going to need to have uh, a logical mindset, a programming logical mindset, which for me took many years to develop. These tools will make me much more fast and effective. They already are. I can create an entire IT organization from for most mid-level, even major corporate five, you know, Fortune 500s. I'm not saying I could run all that, especially at like a major Fortune 500, 50 billion dollar company or something. I'm not saying that, but like for a small to medium-sized company, I can write the full stack depending on what your business model is, uh, very, very quickly. I could do that before machine learning, but now I'm much more able and capable of doing that faster. So what is going to be the next problem to solve, right? When you have most mid, let's just say I'm a mid-level developer or whatever, and if I'm able to use these tools to basically do the work that two or three other developers could do, uh, and then if you combine really my 15, almost 20 years of experience, I can bring the whole level, like from a business standpoint, that's still going to be very hard to find. For the juniors and the mid-levels out there, you can get there. You're going to get there the whole package over time, but you could certainly still be a humongous major contributor if you learn the basics of web technology and then learn how these tools can make you so much better, so much faster. And you'll see that people that go from no experience can compete with mid-levels and even senior levels within just a few years. So 
I don't think these tools are really going to do away with um, jobs. It's going to raise the bar. But yeah, anyway, you know, I recommend you check out his video here. He talks about a lot of different topics, but, um, you know, Tech Lead is actually a, a pretty smart dude. I, I've, I've talked to him before in the past, and I, I think that he has some very good points there. But ultimately, there's a lot of people that talk about, like, clickbait stuff on YouTube. And uh, I, I think, you know, these jobs are definitely going to be around for uh, the foreseeable future, definitely for the, the rest of my career in some way, shape or form. That said, uh, I went ahead and I revamped my website, sort of uh, all the back end infrastructure. I moved away from Linode. I now moved it to AWS. So I'm going to be trying to revisit this. Um, this is a, a site that I actually did during a few months, like I guess before the pandemic, but it's been four years now and I've just been sort of going through and uh, looking at it occasionally. But when you sign up, you get over 50 courses. Um, obviously, I need some new, new courses, but this is an example of uh, pay customer, you log in, you can um, just view all the videos. So very similar to any other online learning platform. There's 50 plus videos there. It's one price for everything. There's no subscription model and there will be new content eventually. Uh, but this is more of a pet project for me. So also, yeah, just check out Tech Leads video. Let me know what you think and everybody have a great night.